uh, to let every, everybody know that this is round four of the street repair program. It's been a partnership between our organization near Southside Inc. and the city of Fort Worth with us um, acting in our role as administrator of tax increment finance district number four. So the partnership is on the, the funding side with um, half of the money for this program coming from that TIF district number four and half coming from the 2014 bond program. So these are your tax dollars at work. The, the TIF district, um, for those that aren't familiar with how it works, it basically captures a significant share of the property taxes within the near south side so that they can only be used for infrastructure within that boundary. And so that is a primary funding source uh, for the upgrade of roadways and other infrastructure. And we are, um, we've enjoyed working with Transportation Public Works Department and the Water Department on this program. Hopefully you have seen the results of the first three rounds of the street repair program across the district, uh, collections of streets in South Main Village area, uh, Magnolia Village. And so this will be round four in the purpose of this meeting, which Mary Hannah, the city's project manager, man manager will go through is to give you all the information on the construction. Now this follows a design meeting that we had a while back where the city asked to hear from all of the developers and business owners, property owners along these streets to coordinate the locations of driveways and utility connections. And so hopefully that coordination has taken place, but tonight we'll give you another opportunity to ask questions of the of, uh, Mary and the contractors. Um, I, Mary's told me that it probably is unwieldy to go around the room and have everybody introduce themselves, but I would encourage you as you um, have questions or just want to, to let uh, the um, contractor and, and Mary know that you're here to let them know which where your property is located, because this is probably the the first step in ongoing communications uh, throughout the project. So with that, uh, I will hand off to Mary Hanna from Transportation and Public Works. Thank you, Mike, I uh, appreciate that. Um, I want to remind everyone uh, this meeting is recorded and it's going to go to the YouTube channel for the city and also any chat you put is going to show up. So I want to make sure everyone is okay with that. Uh, and know that it is recorded. So uh, good evening, my name is Mary Hanna. I'm going to be the project manager for this project and this is round four of the program. We, like Mike said, we're going to go view overview of the improve, land improvement and the construction schedule, which I'm sure everyone wants to know when we're going to be in front of their property. Um, so tonight's agenda will be, I'll give you update on the program, then we'll talk about this project limit and the existing condition, then talk about the budget scope and the schedule. And then we'll open it at the end for question. If you have a question in the middle, please put it in the chat and we'll answer it at the end. So uh, this is a map of the program. This is four rounds, like Mike, Mike said. So the color um, map is the blue is round one and it's finished two years ago, actually more than two years ago now. Um, the orange color is round two, which finished last year. Round three is the green color, which is finished. We are on, on working on scheduling final inspection and bunch list. So it's almost done also. And then- Mary, the this color, is Susan Blue. And I don't know if you know that we can, I can't get into WebEx, so I can't see anything you're talking about. And I'm not aware of the prior meetings, although I'm in that area every day. So could you, I, I would be curious about how many people are able to see what you're talking about. Uh, we can see names. I assume the people with the name can see my screen. The one is saying caller ID is the one we cannot, we cannot see my screen. Um, Ma'am, is this presentation, the whole thing, with, we're going to be recorded and you can see the screen. Uh, in the record. So if you have any questions, um, you can ask. How do I get the recording? We'll t there is a link from the city website will be. It a will be on from the, from the city website. 
from if you go to the city website at you and you type the project name, you should be able to go to the link to the meeting. Okay, I'll, I'll call you because I'm not. I don't understand what you're saying. What what site you're talking about? Um, I will just call Southside Fort Worth and find out later on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That sounds good, Susan. Uh, call or send me an email, and we'll get a, a link directly to you. All right, because we we you know we're kind of in the dark here. But go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so the green uh, is a project that um, said in round three almost finished, and then round four is all the red uh, color three, which is the one in this project starting construction. Uh, so what's the update? I want to show you some picture of what happened in round two and three. This is an example of what Mike saying. Um, the street, it will be where exactly the same condition that street we're going to talk about today, and they are now it's drivable. <laughs> Looks nicer, of course. This is round three. This is Washington and uh, Daggett Street. They were horrible condition before we start. So round four. So which street we are going to do in round four? Actually, we have 13 streets scheduled for this round. So the first one is Brian from Pennsylvania Avenue to Tucker. We did uh, Brian all the way from Vickery to Tucker in the other round uh, one. Uh, so this round will take it from Tucker to Pennsylvania. Uh, we also going to do any between Brian and Crawford. We did, we did the other limit from any from South Main to Brian oh. and from Crawford to uh, Calhoun in uh, round one of uh, round two. Well, Will there be any access on Bryan Avenue to the parking lots for the tenants for 601 South Main? Sir, because that's their, that's their only access to their parking lots is Bryan that will be ripped up right there. Can, can we go, can we answer all the questions to the end? I'm sorry, can we leave all the questions to the end? I'll answer your question. Well, so, I just want to know if there will be access. And I can, we can talk about it later, but will there be access for my tenants? Because we have a multi-tenant property, you, and that's the only way they can get in their parking lots is Bryan Avenue right there between Tucker and Penn. Yes, they will be access all the time. Okay, that, that, perfect. Then I'll, I can ask questions later. That's one thing I really wanted to know. Thank you. Uh, Kentucky, uh, so there is three streets. When we did the design for this round, we didn't show, we, they were not included. That's why this project was delayed a little bit. We added three streets west of uh, east of uh, 35 we added kentucky from broadway to victory and then we added missouri from stella to broadway and we added broadway from i-35 to kentucky this three streets you can see them on the side we added that uh, late in the project but they are now included in this round um, we have also, in, as part of this project, we have Oak Grove from Rosedale to Magnolia. We have St. Louis from Rosedale to Magnolia, also. And then we have May Street from Rosedale to Oleander. And then we have Oleander from May Street to St. Louis. Then we have the last four street is Washington from Rosedale to Dashwood. Adam from Rosedale to Dashwood, also. And then we have Ninth Avenue from Pennsylvania to Cooper and Enderley from Allen to Myrtle. You can see them on the side of this map. So what the street looks like. So why these streets were included. So I'm showing you some picture of the horrible condition of the street. You can see Oak Grove. Uh, the pavement is in bad condition. St. Louis the same way. Uh, Ninth Avenue. So Ninth Avenue, uh, you can see the pavement is bad, but the curb and gutter and driveway are in good condition on sidewalk. Uh, you can see Adam doesn't have curb and gutter. Everything is missing. Same thing for Kentucky and Missouri. One side of Missouri doesn't have any curb and gutter even. So that's why all these streets were included in uh, this project. So what's the scope? So uh, start one by one because every street have a different scope than the other. So uh, first street we'll talk about is uh, Bryan Avenue from Pennsylvania to Tucker. We're actually going to replace the old 
water line there. We're going to replace it to up, uh, upgrade it to 12 inch water line. And we're going to replace the uh, sanitary sewer crossing. Uh, we're going to construct carbon gutter and driveway and replace the damaged sidewalk and ramp on both sides. So if there is a, I know some areas uh, in uh, Bryan have a new carbon gutter and driveway. So if it's damaged, we'll replace it. It's new, we'll re leave it in place. Then we're going to rehabilitate the street with a new asphalt pavement. Um, next street is any. We are going to replace a water line in any with an eight inch water line and then replacing the sanitary sewer. Uh, any does have very limited um, uh, curb and gutter we need to be replacing. The rest of any is in good condition or, sub or a brand new curb and gutter. And then we're going to put a new asphalt where we're going to replace the water line. Um, there is a small section of sidewalk we're going also to include as part of the program since it was missing in all the other phases. We're going to install a sidewalk on Jarvis. So we are not replacing basement or anything. We're only including uh, concrete curb and, um, uh, curbs and sidewalk on the south side of Jarvis since we received the complaint that this is a missing piece of sidewalk. Um, Kentucky, um, Kentucky, uh, Kentucky from Broadway South all the way to um, um, Tucker was replaced as part of 2014 bond. Uh, we are going to replace the limit between Broadway and Vickery, which was not included in the bond. We are going to replace the existing water line there. We are going to replace it with a 16 inch water line. Currently, we have a 20 inch, we can replace it to 16 inch. I'm going to construct concrete for the driveway, replacing all the damaged sidewalk and ADRM both sides of the street, and then rehabilitate the street with asphalt paving. We also going to do Missouri between Stella and Broadway. We're going to install concrete carbon gutter and driveways and um, ADA ramps and sidewalk, on, especially on the west side of Missouri, since the east side is mainly there or going to be part of a uh, rental um, factory improvement. And then we're going to be rehabilitating the street and asphalt. Um, the third street in this group is Broadway. We are going to do Broadway between Kentucky and the Frontage Road, and we're going to replace the water line there to eight inch water line, adding urban gutter, driveway, and then asphalt street. Um, Oak Grove, so going back to west of 35, we're going to do Oak Grove. Uh, we are not replacing the water line on Oak Grove. Oak Grove have a new water line, so only replacing the sanitary sewer. We are uh, doing an eight inch sanitary sewer there. We are constructing curb and gutter, driveway, and replacing all damaged concrete sidewalk, ADA ramp on both sides of the street, and then uh, putting uh, asphalt, no asphalt building. Um, St. Louis. Uh, between uh, Rosedale and Magnolia, we are replacing the water line and the sanitary sewer line in that street, both of them. Uh, we're constructing concrete curb and gutter driveway, replacing the damaged concrete sidewalk and rehabilitation uh, of the street with asphalt. Uh, we're also including May, which is between Oleander and uh, Rosedale. We're replacing the water line also there and doing the curb and gutter and driveway and street rehabilitation. Uh, since we are doing St. May and St. Louis, we decided to add the small piece of pavement between them, which is uh, Oleander, since we are also replacing the sanitary sewer there. We are not doing the water line in Oleander, we're only doing the sewer. And uh, one side of Oleander actually in good condition. Um, on the south side, the north side is in bad missing carbon gutter, so we are going to do that. Uh, and um, doing the bathing. There is no sidewalk included in Oleander in this section. Um, then we have Washington Avenue from Rosedale to Bashwood. We're going to replace the old water line there, and then we're going to construct a new concrete curb and gutter and driveway, replace the damaged concrete uh, sidewalk, and replace anything uh, need to be replaced, and then rehabilitation in asphalt. Uh, we're going also to Adams with Barrow to Washington from Rosedale to Dashwood and they're replacing the water line there with 
going to add the concrete carbon and gutter driveway and replacing all the damaged concrete sidewalk and adding them on both sides of the street and then rehabilitation of the streets in new asphalt. Ninth uh, Avenue from Pennsylvania to Cooper. Uh, we're going to replace the water line with an eight inch. We're going to construct new carbon gutter driveway, replacing any damaged concrete sidewalks and drains on both sides and rehabilitation of the street and uh, asphalt. This is the longest one. We have three blocks of that street of Ninth Avenue. And then we have Enderley from Allen to Myrtle. We're going to replace the water line there with a 12-inch water line. Both sides of the street have an existing 12-inch, so except in the middle bar, so we're going to replace that middle bar with a 12-inch. Um, that street has um, carbon gutter in good condition on sidewalk, so the only thing we're going to do is only redo the pavement uh, and asphalt, but the rest of the street uh, have good condition sidewalk and uh, driveways and everything. So that is for the school. So how it look like? This is pictures from round one and two. Um, their, their street looks way worse even than the existing condition of round four. But this is how they look now. Um, this is a picture of the asphalt driveways, uh, AGRM uh, driveways, sidewalks. So after we finish, the street should look like this one. So project schedule, I know everyone cares about the project schedule. So the contractor is going to mobilize next week uh, on January 21st. He's going to start the setting up temporary water lines and his uh, traffic control and everything. He's going to start in Kentucky, Broadway, and Missouri. So you will see them in this area first thing. Um, the actual construction going to start in January 25th. Since there are three streets and there is 16 inch water line and several water line and connection. So it will take us from end of January until May, four months to finish that street and these three streets. But um, that May it finish everything, the facility up to cleaning up and doing the pavement. Uh, then they will move while they're doing the paving and continuing working on Kentucky. Uh, and Missouri and Broadway on the paving, so we have a second crew moving doing the utility. So how it goes, like the contractor will mobilize, start working on the utility. As soon as the utility finish in one street, we have another crew moving to start doing what we call flat work, which is your carbon gutter, driveway, sidewalk. After they finish all of that concrete, another crew will move and do the asphalt paving. So technically, you will see like in three phases, they not going to overlap. There will be maybe time lag between them, well, depending on how we can schedule them and weather. This schedule is weather dependent and also based if we don't have any utility in our way or anything delay our project. Um, so after they finish uh, Kentucky, Broadway, Missouri, they're going to move to Brian and Annie. So it will take them around two months from April to June to do Brian and Annie. And then they're going to move to Oak Grove and St. Louis and Oleander and May, all these four streets together. Um, so they're going to start in, in June and it will take them up to October to work in this uh, four streets. Then um, they're going to go to Washington and Adam. They're going to work there from end of September to November 23rd for Thanksgiving. Hopefully, finish all of them, everything before Thanksgiving. Uh, so after the holiday, they're going to start on 9th Avenue from November to January. And then Enderley will be the last one from December to end of January. So our construction time is 365 days, it's a whole year. So hopefully we don't have any delay, so we can we won't have to extend the time. But for now, it is uh, one year construction time. Um, we have online. We have the contractor with us. We also have the project inspector. Her name is Lori. Uh, this is the contact information for me and the project inspector. If you have any question during construction during any time, if you can contact either one or both of us. We can answer you. So with that, 
I ended my presentation. Um, we can open it now for questions. And I think council member and join the meeting. Right? I can see her online. If, uh, she did, Mary. Council member Zeta is on the line. I'm not sure if she's available to say anything, but she's on the line. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity just to say hi to everybody. Unless hi. there's questions for me, I'm happy to answer those as well. Thank you for joining the meeting. Well, this is Susan Blue, and I'm on Washington. I'm a doctor's office. Have a doctor's office. So, will it? Will I be assured that my exit, that my entryways and exits will be open at least one at a time? I have a lot of elderly patients. Yeah, sure. If you ha you have two uh, two driveways, you think? Well, I have one for staff and one for employees. And the one for staff, I have a lot of trouble with people pulling through it into the neighboring office and using my parking lot as a freeway. So uh, it's um, <laughs> my older patients can't work can't walk from the back parking lot to the front very well sometimes. So it's important. But I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just asking you. I've got two parking lots that are used all the time. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, I, I, okay. I don't know if we are replacing your uh, driveway. If we are not, are they are in good condition? You know, I can go and Well, look the driveways are in good condition. Now, Washington is a lot better than it used to be. But I also have the uh, high school students walking through the lot in the streets. So putting a street down is going to encourage that, which is not going to be any fun. Um, but I'm concerned about getting my patients in. I mean, that's because they leave their trash as they walk up and down the street. That's the problem. I don't mind they're walking on the street, but then I get to go pick up the trash. So, um, but I'm mainly concerned about my patients and I have tenants, so who has patients also? So, so. okay, I'm um, think at Washington, we're only replacing two driveways on Washington. The rest of the driveways, we are leaving them alone. So we, um, so I don't think that you, are you closer to Rosedale? Uh, what now? Are you close to Rosedale? Uh, yes, okay, I'm half, yes, half a block north. I'm between Rosedale and Dashwood. So the only ones we are replacing the driveway for is the property at uh, 1021 Washington. I okay, so you're not bothering my driveways. So will no. we have street access then to get to the driveway? Yeah, so while we're working doing the street, uh, it may be a downtime for a little bit, but we will work with you and the inspector will inform you before any work is done. So you will know what's going on at all the time. And this is Apple, so it should be faster than concrete. So um, we'll work with you, don't worry. And we will give you uh, um, time to let your patient or anyone know when are we going to be there doing the basement. That would help because if we can let them know ahead of time, because they come in from some of them from Abilene and places like that. So that would help if yeah, I can so have at least a week's notice to let them know what's going on. There is no parking anywhere. I mean, they have to get to my lot or they're not going to be able to park anywhere between the yeah. high school students and the construction people that are working on Rosedale. So yeah. we, we have seven day notices. Uh, at okay. least, and we sometimes, if you're doing the water and sewer, we'll give you also the three days and one day. So seven, three, and one, depending on what are we working on. But uh, we okay. will keep you informed all the time. Great. Thank and you very you much. Can, yeah, and you can see my contact information and the inspector. Uh, you can send us email or call us anytime. This is our phone number. Okay, well, I really can't see anything, but I can call. I'll I'll talk to Mike Brennan and get all that later. Okay, yeah, sure. so thank you. I can't get in. I can't get an account from WebEx, so I can't I can't see. I've tried to get an account tonight, but it doesn't work. So that's fine. <laughs>
Thank I'm you. sorry. There's something new about Webex we didn't know about. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, man, that's also my concern is I manage the property at 601 South Main that our only access to our retail parking lot and my office tenants parking lot is on Bryan Avenue. And so we need to make sure they have consistent access because we also have a restaurant that's going to be doing build out here in the next few months. And so my concern is you mentioned that there could be a period of downtime that we can't access our parking lots. Where oh. am I going? I mean, I've got a multi tenant building. I've got at least 60, 70 cars there that need to be parked for work. And if they can't access the parking lots, that's my, my, my biggest concern here on Bryan Avenue. Brian, the only, okay, Brian, we are not replacing. You're between Tucker and uh, Annie, right? Pin to Tucker on Bryan Avenue is I've got a retail parking lot and my office tenant parking lot, and the only entrance ingress egress they have is on to Bryan. Between between it's between Annie and Penn on Bryan is their only point of entrance and exit on that property. Okay, so Brian is the same condition I was talking about Washington. The only driveway we are replacing on Brian is going to be the one uh, uh, on Pennsylvania. It is 201 uh, East Haiti, technically her the address there, but um, we are not replacing any other driveways. I, I understand. The, the pro we, we just built the property and had the driveways and they're great. My concern is having consistent access to the driveways to enter the parking lots from Brian. I need like it's a one way it's a one lane street and that's the only entrance to the tenant parking lot and the retail parking lot is on Brian that y'all are gonna be ripping up. Uh okay. So <laughs> we are doing asphalt street. Putting the asphalt take two, three hours. It's not going to be a whole day. We You're can replacing the water lines as well. Yeah, but the water line will keep the street all the time open. Your driveway is all the time open. Okay, so, so there will be no there will be no chance that my tenants aren't going to be able to access the parking lots that they have to be able to access. They'll you know maybe the street will get ripped up a little bit while they're in construction, but at no point will they not have access. Yes, we're going to be okay. Right, yeah, that, that was my only real concern was if there was a doubt, like a week that they couldn't <laughs> park in there, I'm gonna get yeah. flooded with. <laughs> so it's maximum, it's maximum couple of hours down. We are not talking about days. It's this okay, place perfect. Thing. And we can coordinate to do that, you know, after hours when they're not on that street for the most. If you guys have the most amount of time, we can coordinate that. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, no, that's great. No, that's as long as I've always I got constant access to uh, the property. I don't think I'll have many complaints from my tenants. So I think we'll be good. Yeah, we are not closing down the street. No, they cannot do that. Okay, yeah, that, that was my biggest concern when I saw street construction and updating right. water lines and sewer lines. I was like, oh, I've seen what that looks like sometimes, and it's not pretty. But if it's, they'll never be right. the. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mary, we had a question in the chat, uh, just a request to see if these slides might be posted anywhere on the city's website to be accessible now, if somebody wanted to, to pull up the PDF on their computer. Um, no, I'm sorry. They, okay. they, we do the recording with the slides and put it on the website. Okay. All right, but Kyla asked that, and maybe maybe she has a slide that she would like us to to go to, um, if we if we want to talk through a specific issue. I also just wanted to mention that the the expectation of access that Mary was talking about. That I I'm confident that the the contractors and the inspectors will work with all the property owners to to maximize that access. There is just through the utility construction and, and all of that work. Um, that's probably the most intensive uh, construction phase. And so while access may continue, it is. I just want to make sure that everybody has the expectation that the street's going to be significantly torn up. It's, you know, people will be driving over um, the utility ditches that are just repaired with the temporary fill. 
for a while because the utility phase happens first and then there's a little bit of time before the, the pavement happens. So just want to make sure that everybody has that expectation that it's it, it goes as quickly as, as the contractor can make it go, but it is the torn up streets uh, with uh, obviously the end result is, is much better, but there is some disruption just as far as the roadway surface that you're driving on. Yeah, but yeah, you had, you know, Mike, like we didn't get anyone out of their property for a week or anything, none of our streets. Right. So we kept access all the time for everyone in all the phases. And um, Mary, this is Lori. I want to add in as well that um, while you only, while you can probably pave that section of a road in a couple of hours, we have to put prime on it um, the night before or the day before, and they can drive on it after it dries, but there would be a little bit of a time that they can't drive on it at that point and then of course while they're laying asphalt um you know we'll do the best we can but sometimes access gets interrupted for a little bit of time a few hours so i just want to uh but we can coordinate with you guys to make sure that those interruptions will occur off you know after office hours when they're you know the tenants and stuff aren't accessing the property and there's not retail customers coming as well correct um they don't generally lay asphalt in the evening do you do you so are that, you that means we will have day? street closures and, and preventing tenants from accessing can we do it on weekdays or weekends or like what's the like because i'm trying to think of ways we can work for okay, the properties we can do, already because i can already day. see major issues at certain properties we can work saturday uh, I still have tenants open on Saturday and they work. And so that's why I'm, and that's the only, you're ripping up the only access they have. And so there will be closures now I'm seeing. Um, is it's about a couple of hours. She's not talking about days. Yes, but I mean, I have a coffee so shop, a restaurant they, coming in. I've got tenants that have clients coming in and out of, their pro and out of the property. So like, I mean, it's, I can't just tell them that this it's an, and then where do they go? Are they just going to have their, be trapped in the parking lot while it happens they're not gonna uh jeff we're i'll let you know several days ahead of time um there may have to be some signage put up or maybe some notices uh, put out for the public um that I, I just don't want you to think that we cannot not interrupt well, that, that was my question was like will there be and i was told there weren't but now i'm trying i'm, I'm just trying to think i'm forced seeing what the issues are gonna be when i've got my doctor's office and clients coming in and out and they can't then access okay, the property uh, and have to wear like so even if the, the tenant can't park then where's his clients gonna park when there's you know well that, jeff, okay, jeff. i'm sorry jeff i'm sorry uh this is not our first phase in this Round. This is round four. Yes, uh, ma'am. All around in this this um, area, is we have the same condition as yours. We have restaurants. We have doctor offices. We have everyone there. So your case is not special. We. Want I know it's not special. Uh, yeah. I'm just. I'm just asking not, questions I'm to get informed I'm, on what I, we're going to be doing. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. We worked with them. They didn't have a problem. Uh, and it worked smoothly and it didn't have um, any issue. So, I understand. Uh, I'm just trying to ask questions so I can inform the owners and my tenants and be informed whether or not. We will Jeff. tell them what's going to happen before we start everything. But I'm saying there is a seven day notice, three day notice, and one day. So I'm worried more about the water than uh, street. Street bathing is not going to be that much interruption for your. Uh, tenants or your uh, restaurant or any of that. Um, we're going to keep you and your tenants updated. Um, the, the, what, we have to do the bathing, but we cannot tell you we, there is not going to be interruption, but there is going to be uh, hours. It's not going to be days. What Lori is telling you is hours. Uh, everyone can live with hour of interruption. You well, yeah, I understand that, but uh, that's why I was trying to ask the questions on times that we can do these, just thinking if 
you know, we can do them later, but then we can't also not at night. So I'm just trying to think ahead of time so we can work through this and not trying to make an issue out of it, but I'm just trying to ask questions. So the restaurant is going to be open even at night. So if it's at night, even the restaurant will be open at night. If you're talking about a restaurant, it doesn't matter what time because it will be open even at night. I'm, I'm more, I'm more asking for of all hours trying to get an idea because I have multiple different tents. That's my only question. I'm not just specifying for a restaurant only. Okay, so the, yeah, one thing we'll try to to do the best what we we can. We'll work with you. We'll coordinate with you, but we cannot promise zero time out. There will be, but it's not going to be days. We can promise you that it's not going to be days. It's going going to be hours. Uh, I'm trying to make sure the expectation is okay. Like hours, we all can live with hours, and so we can get a new street. I'm sure they don't like the condition of the street they going to their parking lot. So uh, they will be happy with a new street and if they can live with hours down to be able to get that, I would be happy to do that. Um, I'm, I'm not saying we are not going to close the street. That is not concrete pavement. Um, and there is minimum flat work in front of your uh, um, building anyway, because there is brand new driveway and sidewalk. So the only thing there is doing the paving, which is, Take hours is not saying they will be working there and they will be making um, uh, people make you can enter your driveway, but they will be working there and we will keep the street open. That's a promise. We we are not permitting the contractor to shut down the street. This is not in his permit. So that's what I can tell you. And I'll just finish up by saying that I'm good at communicating and I. Um, let people know ahead of time and we work things out. I've done it with several businesses. I'm working with getting access to their business and letting them know in plenty of time when we're going to pave. And during that time, you know, people aren't going to be able to come in and out. But we'll, we'll work ahead of head with you on that. All right. So Jeff or Mike, do we have any other questions in the chat? Not in the chat. And I was just chiming in on that in the chat, just that issue to to try to get the word out to tenants to expect to utilize on street parking as much as possible. And you know, I know it, it might not be a one for one replacement of all of the spaces, but if you could get as many folks to utilize on street parking, South Main and Pennsylvania, and then I would expect that for evening restaurant traffic if there's probably probably a way to set up a drop off zone uh, in front of the restaurant for that day. But uh, I'm confident that, that Lori's going to work with y'all to make it as easy as possible. Right, and we just set, we finished the area north of that of that section of Brian. We and did. We finished yeah, that was that was the property was being developed. So there wasn't any tenant. It was just construction, which is why y'all weren't able to do Brian from Penn to Tucker is my is, is my guess is why that wasn't done when it was because they were under construction at the time. Um, but we finished also any while it's what you were half tenant there, right? No, that was during our construction of the property. I had to, I had to have y'all come out and repave Annie because it was undrivable uh, in 2019. Yeah, that was round two. I know that was uh, round two of the project we did any. It, so it was so after y'all had already finished. Y'all had to come back and redo it. We had complaints. That was when we had finally built and had tenants move in. But no, we had, we'll figure this out. We'll work through it. Okay. Um, anyone wants to unmute himself to ask a question? You don't want to write it in the chat. Yes, ma'am. This is Ben Selman. I'm with the Baylor uh, Healthcare Systems, and I'd like to make sure I have my timelines correct on the Enderly Place to Myrtle Street, 12-inch uh, water line with asphalt. Was that timeline December of 21 through January of 22? Yeah, December 10, 2021 to January 20, 2022. Okay, I gotcha. want to say something. Enderly if we have issues with other streets, 
we may move and do it quicker than that. But we will inform you. I know that we put it on that date because it's easier with uh, college there. I think they will be out during that time, hopefully, so less traffic. Uh, okay. I know the hospital is still open, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll try to schedule it uh, in a time that is down, but it's, um, we'll do our best. If we end up doing it earlier, we'll, of course, inform everyone. Okay, and I, I guess my second question will be, will they phase in one half to the other? They've taken the entire street. That's that's a big deal for a couple of the buildings. So, okay, that's the same situation like what we were talking with Jeff. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. Doing asphalt, we are not doing concrete. So we have to do the whole street at once, and it takes uh, one day to do the subgrade of the basement and do put uh, a, seal on, a ceiling on uh, on it, that's what Lori was saying, and then come again on another day and put the asphalt. So okay, my... the process is not as, not days, doesn't take days to do it. It is quicker, uh -huh. it's quicker than concrete. Okay. So, but and yeah, maybe you all... mentioned it, that, that's good. I appreciate you telling me that. Maybe it was mentioned and I, I did not hear it, but. Will they be a notification that I can reach out to pick up on uh, the timeline? I know you mentioned if they're ahead of schedule, they may drop over to Enderley. Uh, would that be a week's notice? Yes, of course, yes. Okay, we'll give you, thank you. Uh, uh, notices before we do that. Okay, thank you. Very good job, and I appreciate it. You're welcome. Mary, this is Susan Blue again, and I just appreciate knowing that we have advance notice and that we are going to have advance notice before the day gets here. So I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Yeah, we work with the doctor offices all the time, so don't worry. Yeah. Well, uh, Lori is good. She will go in and let everyone know what time we're going to be there. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, excuse me. My name is Kelsey Van Horn. I'm with uh, the I'm with Baylor All Saints. I'm the, the hospital safety officer. Can I get a little bit of clarification on the water piece of this project? Which street? Just the, the water, the replacing utilities, how does that work? So uh, first the contractor has to put uh, temporary water. Uh, if you are connected to one, any of the water we are replacing, the contractor go ahead and check that and then put everyone on a temporary water line. Uh, after you switch to that new temporary water line, uh, we going the construction um, and remove your old meter, the old water line, put a new water line. After the water line is tested and is good, we switch everyone from the temporary to the new water line. So while the water line is being installed, uh, all your meters is. Um, um, is going to be out, so you are not going to be charged this time. It will be an average from last year. Uh, so there is no meter until we put the new meters in. Uh, I don't think we have any um, hospital. I don't think we are getting, the hospital is not connected to any of our water lines. Um, as far as I remember, I have the consultant online but he can confirm that. I'll yes, the only there. thing in Fort Worth would be the fire main to a one of our buildings, not the hospital building, but it is attached to it. There's a yeah. fire line. Okay, so we were we actually putting a temporary uh, six inch uh, for the fire. If we, are, we we found out some fire lines we are um, disturbing, so we are putting temporary big temporary water lines specifically for the fire lines, but we are not interrupting of the main water line for you. Hopefully that Thank you. I appreciate all that. We, we may reach out again separately just to make sure that we know exactly, exactly what's going to happen. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mary, I'd like to interject. Um, the persons um, 
uh, Jeff and Susan, I, I remembered their name, and then there was the man who was from Baylor. If they will um, shoot me an email or a text or a phone call, I will start ahead of time looking at what the situation is so that we're not trying to troubleshoot at the last minute. Um, that's so, perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So helpful. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Is that Mary speaking? Oh, that's Lori. That's my inspector. Okay, Lori. Okay. Yeah. If you can yeah. just reach out to me and and uh, then I can get by there way ahead of time and take a look what the scenario is and start looking at options. Okay. Right. Yeah. Lori, yeah. We'll work with you. Believe me, we are not going to, our purpose is not to get you out of business. Our purpose is to do the street. So we'll work exactly. with you. <laughs> We've had many years with y'all and it's all been good. So <laughs> I expect this to be the same thing. Uh, Lori, how would I get your contact? Okay, you don't see the screen. Okay. Uh, so I do not. Ben, I've got it. Okay, that's okay. Kelsey has it. Yep, Thank you it. so much. You're welcome. If anyone else is not able to see the screen, just let me know and I'll uh, I'll say it out loud. <laughs> okay, I'm I going. I can't. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm, oh, the one who can't see the screen cannot see the shed. I was going to put it in the shed, but okay. <laughs> no point. <laughs> Okay. Now, can we just it's have your number? It's eight one seven three seven two two seven one four is the phone number right. for law. And uh, right. I'm going to give you my phone number also. Um, six eight two three five two four two nine four, and it's different right. than the because that's my cell phone number. Um, six eight two. Three five two four two nine four. Uh, you can send me a text also. Great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Welcome. Okay, I need more questions. Thank you all for having this. I appreciate it. I'm actually on the phone from North Carolina, so I could see what's going on. So thank you. <laughs> and I will for tuning in, as Susan. soon as the link to this presentation and to the recording is ready, I will share it with Mike so he can share it with everyone uh, in your South side. So you can get even a copy of it and uh, you can keep it. Great, thank you. I'm gonna sign off. Thank you all, have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Bye. for anybody else that uh, my my email is very simple. It's just Mike at nearsouthsidefw.org. And I'm willing to help with the coordination. Uh, generally, I most of my coordination role is pre-construction as we're dealing with development plans and so forth. But I'm glad to continue that through however I can. And I just want to thank Mary and Lori. They're doing an amazing job uh, on this program. It's it's a very comprehensive effort uh, working closely with the water department and the consultants at ANA. And it's it's disruptive for a little bit, but hopefully, you know, if you just drive around the district, you can see those results that Mary was showing on screen and we'll end up with streets that work better for everybody and they're committed to making it smooth as possible during construction as well. So thanks to Mary and Lori for your leadership on this. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. So if no one else has any questions, uh, thank you all for attending the meeting. Uh, if you have any questions and if you can see the screen, uh, my email and my phone number is there and also Lori's email and phone number. Uh, if you have any question, or you can reach out to any of us and we'll answer your questions. Uh, thank you all uh, for attending the meeting. Thank you.